Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Sounds Periodization, and I would like for you to stop front squatting. What? Dr. Mike, way to turn the shit up to 100 real fast. Back up. I thought this was a lifting channel that like compound, full range of motion, hardcore lifts. In fact, we do. So this sounds a lot like blasphemy. And it definitely does, but hold on. I swear to God, I can explain. I have three ways of saying what I'm going to say. Here's way number one. Front squatting is an excellent exercise for the sport of weightlifting, which is a sport that they do in the Olympics, which consists of the snatch and the clean and jerk. The clean and jerk has the position of the front rack and the clean, which is when you catch the bar into a front squat and you squat it up. For that reason alone, if you are a competitive weightlifter or a recreational weightlifter and you're trying to do the sport of Olympic weightlifting, or as it's otherwise called, weightlifting, that's what it's actually called, my, uh, my old ETSU weightlifting training center buddies would kill me if I just called it Oli or something like that. For people training for the sport of weightlifting, the front squat is not uh, wrong. It is the opposite of wrong. It is indispensable. It is a part of your sport skills. 100%. So you have to train it, and you just kind of don't have a choice. You can train weightlifting without ever front squatting, but you would be doing your training substantially regressed from where it could be. Sport specificity is king. However, if you are a strongman competitor, powerlifter, bodybuilder, physique athlete of any kind, and especially recreational person just trying to get bigger and stronger, the front squat suffers, this is point number two, from some pretty substantial downsides. Not the end of the world type of stuff. In TLDR, you can front squat if you like, but consider this first. First, the front squat is not as stable as what's called the back squat to weightlifters, which is the high bar squat to everybody else. Bar back here, not front squat, rack position or cross position. There's lower stability. You can get pretty good stability front squatting if you do a weightlifting rack position. That for many people, especially more hypertrophied people or those not built anthropometrically for weightlifting very well, is very difficult or impossible to do. They have to do the cross position. The cross position is definitely lower stability because your elbows will tend to fall down. You'll tend to slip and not be able to hold the bar. If you push the bar too far back, you start to choke yourself which is fun in the bedroom, but absolutely no fun, especially in the weight room. That lower stability is a problem because stability is the foundation of good technique and force production, especially as you get with reps closer to failure. The thing is, weightlifters don't typically do a lot of reps close to failure. They either do some reps further from failure or singles or doubles that are pretty close to failure, but they also can do a front rack. They practice this position all the time. Typically, when I see people doing front squats in a recreational setting, their stability looks pretty compromised, such that if they push really hard into the bar, it'll fall off of them. Thus, they don't push really hard into the bar. Because they're doing that, they're reducing how much neural drive is being sent to the muscles of the legs. The potential for hypertrophy and strength increase of the muscles in the legs declines relative to a high bar back squat, for example. So that's problem one. Problem two is more chance for shoulder discomfort. Whether you're racking a front squat or with a weightlifting style rack or you're doing the cross rack, which bodybuilders do, the probability that your shoulders get loaded in not fun ways with 300 pounds of barbell force is rather high. Many people can get through tons of front squats without ever having shoulder discomfort. But most of those people are properly coached with the rack position and do all kinds of transitional exercises where they start with holding straps, they lower their hands on the straps for a while, they get one or two fingers in, and then eventually their coaches help them with elbow position and everything. And for those folks, even still, front squats can needlessly stress the shoulder joint. Now, if you have to front squat, there's no way around that. And over time, your shoulders are going to get hardy as fuck. But that time is a time measured in months. And the transition is often painful, literally and figuratively, because your joints are kind of like, ah, your shoulders, ah, and you're just trying to train your legs hard. So the buy-in is very high. The buy-in is so high that many of the world's best strength and conditioning coaches that absolutely use the second pull derivatives, uh, mid-thigh pulls of various kinds, power cleans, et cetera, and they will have a rack position there, many of those people don't put a huge emphasis 
on front squatting because they know that their athletes need their shoulders. Volleyball players, we're not front squatting with them. You can 100% front squat safely and effective with volleyball players, but you have to ask yourself the question, if we just do back squats, are we avoiding this even low probability mess of shoulder stuff that we get into? If you're a recreational lifter, your shoulders are beat up as it is, Again, the front squat can be totally safe and fine for your shoulders, but there's a chance it won't be. And all I'm saying is that chance is higher than in a high bar squat. If someone says, hey, listen, I used to, used to front squat a lot, but I stopped doing it because it was bothering my shoulders, you could be at least be like, well, you're probably doing it wrong, but nah, I hear you, that happens. If someone's like, hey, my shoulders are killing me with high bar back squats, you're gonna be like, what the fuck are you doing with your squats? Are you like shoulder pressing it and keeping it in midair? You know, you can put it down on your neck. So it's just a matter of trade-offs and that more shoulder discomfort is absolutely a feature of front squatting. Next, the rack position tends to slip down and forward and out no matter how you hold it. And the cross rack is even harder to hold, which means that you spend a lot of bandwidth trying to maintain the rack position. When I cue people for front squats for hypertrophy training, if they so ask me to, most of my cues aren't even about depth or pushing the knees out or pushing through the quads or keeping the chest position right. Most of my cues end up being like elbows up, elbows up, elbows up, because as you push out hard from the bottom of the front squat, your elbows tend to come down, which ends up rolling the bar forward completely disrupting back to point one your stability. You have to catch it elbows back up. And even if you catch it and stand up, that's just bandwidth, both physical and mental, that you're spending thinking about the technique. When you're squatting with a high bar, as long as you keep your chest up, that kind of the movement fixes itself. At least you're not fucking with this part of the movement where your hands interact with the barbell. With front squats, that's a big part of it. And unless you've got your technique really grooved in, in that case, sweet. Most people who are like ask like, hey, can I sub out leg presses for front squats? When they try to front squat, they're gonna find out like, oh man, like keeping the position and the elbows and hands in the right place, it's like half the battle. That is bandwidth physical and mental that goes into that and is taken away from training your quads hard, which is the whole point of the exercise. Lastly, especially for higher reps, especially in the front squat, as you get strong, you tend to experience lung compression where the bar hits and it just caves your ribs in. It takes a lot to stay on top of it. With a high bar squat, it's natural just to lean back. With a front squat, it levers you down and it can make it difficult for you to take in big breaths, especially if you have a belt on. Higher reps with the front squats, that's a five, six, even you know reps as high as 10 to 12. You get into this capacity where you're <gasps> trying to <gasps> breathe in a lot, but the shit is physically compressing you and you're like, God damn it, this isn't good for reps because it fucking compresses my breathing. It's not good for max weight because it's not sufficiently stable for me and I end up just worrying about my rack position. And if it's really heavy, my shoulder discomfort is like pretty painful and pretty annoying. That's a lot of downsides. So just consider these downsides. All of these downsides, in my view, on average, make front squatting relatively inferior to high bar squatting for both general strength development and general muscle growth and hypertrophy development. There is no avoiding hard training if you want to grow. But if you want to grow the most, your training needs to be hard and smart. RP Hypertrophy app will make sure you're progressing on track, monitoring and adjusting your workout at all times. So for all that work you're doing, you can be sure you're getting the best results. So you can absolutely do front squats, but understand that they have some serious limitations you may or may not run into. Just know that they're there. And if you really wanna do front squats and you have three or four other great quadriceps variants, you wanna use front squats, take a look at these downsides that I've listed, the four downsides, and think about, is it still worth it? If it is, try it. And if the downsides show up in the first month or two of you doing it, just be like, man, fuck this. And just cash out. You don't need to do front squat. You don't need to do any exercise, really, if you're just developing general strength and hypertrophy, like most of you folks are. But if you do want to do it, make sure you're at least tending to these problems, recognizing them, saying, okay, I know it causes a little trouble for me in my shoulders, but it's worth it because reasons. And those reasons better be good. Just like with everything else on this channel, damn near everything else I say without doing penis jokes in it, for real, for serious now, anything you do in lifting and in life has to have at least some semblance of justification. And if you can justify it, you can next look into every justification and say, okay, am I for real, for real? Is this a good reason? 
or is something else a better idea to do? And if you've honestly and dispassionately analyzed a course of action, you're like, okay, clearly this is a better idea. Begs the question as to why you're doing it. Flipping to more intelligent ideas versus less intelligent is almost the quintessential baseline of wisdom. And it'll get you much more success than if you're just like front squats, they're going in and someone's like, aren't they? And you're like, shut up, pussy. And you just front squat away. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about that. Please uh, shoot some questions in the comments. Can't wait for the front squat defender butt hurt committee to arrive. No doubt not having watched this video full of nuance. And uh, speaking of things that are full, I'm so full of myself. Me complimenting my own videos, I'm full of nuance. Shut up, Mike. See you next time.